that shows you how degenerate the cult of Scientology is on sex is this strange cult-like happening that occurred where people's masturbation was read out to entire crews to humiliate that person. Can you imagine? You sit down there holding the cans and the counselor says, there, 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 is there something you're not telling me? And the person can't, like, thinks of something and says, well, I, I masturbated last night. And do you know what's done in Scientology in a, in a counseling session? They want everything. Well, how long did you do it for? Did you use a toy? What position were you in? What fantasy did you get in your mind while you had an orgasm? I was on these lines for years. You have to get who, when, where, what, how many times, what. Now, if the thought is, well, this is cut cathartic and you get it off and it'll, you, you'll feel better. The guilt that you're giving this up is some kind of crime, a crime by touching yourself. My first, my very first job, my very first assignment when I came onto that job was there was a man who was about 40 years old, he was a staff member. His wife had been sent to uh, Florida, she'd been gone for a year or two on training, and he hadn't seen her, and he had admitted that he had masturbated or been masturbating. And how, where did that come up? How, he how admitted, did that information he, come out? He got in trouble for something and he admitted it, or he was getting a confessional and admitted it, that's how it comes up. And um, so I was 15, and he came to the office and I had to handle him. So it's like the first day, I think, or the second day I started working on this job and I had to tell him that he couldn't masturbate. I had to have him read a policy where L. Ron Hubbard says masturbating is bad and I had to get him to figure out how not to masturbate and... You're 15 years old? Yeah, I'm 15 years old. I was so embarrassed. I didn't even know what I was doing and I'm telling this 40 year old man to not masturbate and it was the most embarrassing thing in the world. No one's allowed to masturbate. Masturbating is a big issue. You get in big trouble. You won't get promoted. No masturbating. You know, even if your wife's gone or, or you're a young kid or anything, no masturbation is allowed. It's really frowned upon. You're considered aberrated. You're considered, like, messed up if you masturbate. But there's a, a bit of a medieval morality uh, at the, in the church about that kind of activity. And it's completely unacceptable. And uh, again, they do consider it their business, and they do consider that you know, they have the right to know everything about every single instance of every single time you've ever done anything. And so they'll pull that information, and they'll make you feel guilty about it. This is read right out. It's, it started off at Inbase, and then it got exported down. Masturbation withholds were read right out to 700 people with the person standing up on the stage and the details were read out to show disgraceful conduct. Th these are the things that you finally realize, oh my God, it was in a cult. I can, I, I, I've said this before on video at least twice. I got a complaint from an OT7, 300,000, 400,000 given the church, who had to spend $3,000 giving up one masturbation withhold. One. Because it went on and on. And what did you do this? And did you do that? And did you excite yourself? But that, 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 that. Now, that's all bad enough. But this is a cult that uses that against you when you leave. I know people that are kind of out, but really just have a little bit of fear of what the church will do with their confessional data if they emerge and speak out. 
So it's a kind of emotional blackmail. Hey, we got the dirt on you, buddy. Now, if you get through all of that, you've survived, you've been warned and punished against getting pregnant, they kick you out to Mexico or beyond, and you're still with the church, and you have a child. By golly, they're going to get that child when it's 12 years old to the Sea Oak. So they want this child that they absolutely forbid you to have for slave labor. And the indoctrinated in the tunnel, Scientology. I know a woman who called me in the non-US three days ago. Her 12-year-old is in the Sea Organization. At 12 years old, they have Sea Org slaves. The reality is that, like, these pictures, like, you know, th these are all field, all rows that we dug, all plants that we planted. This horse corral, I raked every week. That's what we did. I mean... And you were a young child. You were, like, seven and then eight. And nine. How long were you doing this for? Oh, from when I was six until I was 12. Would you call it child labor? Absolutely, it was. How many hours yes. a day would you have to do this? We did uh, the labor for four hours a day, every day, except on Saturdays, we did it all day. And, um, but in addition to the labor, we also had our own individual duties, which we did for several hours a day. So if you've gone through all of that, your child must be donated like a piece of furniture to the Sea Organization. Here's a little bit of what happened to Lori Hodgson and her children. I had to have a knee replacement. Um, uh, and I was scheduled for surgery in November of 09, or 08. And I went in and um, it was a real difficult surgery for me. Uh, it ended up being a botched surgery. The doctor put in two sizes too big of an implant in my knee, but we didn't know that at the time. And I came home, and a week after I was home resting, I was in a lot of pain. I was on high levels of Oxycontin, which is Percocet. My son, behind my back, was taken to an event like my daughter was, behind my back, with my ex-husband to a Sea Org recruiting event. Um, he comes in, hi mom, and I go, uh, hi Jeremy, and he goes, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just really emotional with this. It's okay. Um, this is really hard, I'm, I'm reliving the moment, and, um, he says, I want to join the Sea Org, and I was in so much pain, uh, from my knee, and just, at that moment, I thought I'm losing my son, and, and um, I already went through this with my daughter, got her back, and now my son says even worse, he wants to join the Sea Org. That evening, here comes Jeremy, and says, uh, Mom, I need to talk to you some more. I go, I'm not talking about the Sea Org. Okay. Five minutes later, do you understand, Mom, this is my purpose in my life. Don't you want me to be happy? I'm doing this for you. I mean, you're my mom. I want to I wanna help save the planet. This is my calling. This is something I was meant to do. 100% sure, Mom, I want to do this. And he wanted to leave in a couple days. Well, now this sounds like he had been coached. Yes, he was coached all day to come back and see me that evening by the Sea Org recruiters, the, the elite clergy. He was, he was coached by them and his father. Heaven forbid you go and read the internet because that child will completely be cut off from you. Here's another tragic story you should read. Claudio and Renata Lugli had two boys, 
Tiziano and Flavio. Flavio was grabbed by the church as a very young boy, never to be, now shunning his family and treating his mother as if she is the enemy while he sits at the flag land base working for the church 60 to 80 hour weeks. And this has gone on for years. So, sexual activity highly prohibited, inhibited, in certain advanced churches, you have to get permission of a senior executive to get married. You have to ask, you don't have, you don't even have the right. And you know what the hypocrisy is? This is the hypocrisy. L. Ron Hubbard, man has an inalienable right to the procreation of his own kind. What? Out of baloney.